So I stumbled across this video from an account called Troubleshoot titled, This OS is Almost Windows. I watched a little bit of it and I quickly thought, oh sh I need to check this out myself. And this definitely isn't the first time that we've checked out a clone on this channel, some Linux distribution that tries to either mimic Windows or Mac OS, but this is the first time that I've been moderately impressed, especially compared to some of the other ones where it doesn't really seem like they try all that hard or the operating systems are complete and utter garbage. So boom, this right here is the desktop. I just got it installed and at first glance, you would probably think that this is a Windows operating system. If you saw this installed on a computer off to the side, you'd be like, oh, that's running Windows. And even if you go so far as to click on the start menu, you're like, oh, that's running Windows. <laughs> the theming on this is absolutely immaculate. It's only when you start looking at some of the fine details that you do realize, such as Kate right here as the text editor, only Office Center as the Microsoft Office replacement, Info Center, if we open up the system monitor, for example, this is obviously uh, KDE Plasma running and it makes sense to use KDE Plasma for something like this. It is definitely one of the more customizable desktop environments out there. And I really just can't, can't get over how uh, I like this looks. I mean, you could probably throw this on somebody who's not as technically savvy, throw this on a computer, give it to them, tell them it's Windows. If they're really only going to use Microsoft Edge, he'll go ahead and open it up. There we go. Uh, no, get rid of this garbage. And there we go. Throw them into this and it's going to be a very, very familiar experience for them. And I do believe there are functions to help you install applications. So let's go ahead and grab have something uh, notepad plus plus granted Kate is actually better in my opinion but we're gonna grab this and try to install this Windows application so let's go ahead and grab the latest version installer and there we go so if we go ahead go to our file browser which this is another one it's not as well themed as the start menu and all that but they did a pretty decent job trying to make um, dolphin look as similar to the Windows kind of file explorer as they could but right here we have the exe, the actual icon is showing up, which is pretty cool. Let's double click on that. Wine, of course, is gonna be the installation method for this. So this is the first install. We're missing something for the uh, .NET framework. Let's go ahead and click install and see if it works. And while it does that, I will note the reason why I'm using Notepad++ is I know it works with Wine. If you try to install a variety of other applications, whether that be actual professional tools you might want to use, such as Adobe products, Microsoft Office products. Basically any like advanced higher level application is probably not gonna work with Wine. And I'll go ahead and put some resources down below if you're interested to see kind of what does work with Wine. And some of my other videos going over how to install Windows games and applications on Linux, very good resources. But here's the installer. So we're gonna go ahead and select English and this looks very good. So next, agree, next, next. And this probably won't work, but I'm gonna check it and install. So there we go, and it did work. That's kind of crazy. So here's our desktop shortcut that it created. Uh, let's launch it through that shortcut and see if it opens up. So Notepad++. Plus plus. And here it is. We have Notepad++ plus plus Windows application, and it looks good, looks native. If I saw a screenshot like this, the only things that would kind of throw me off are this right here. Uh, it doesn't look correct. The font in the uh, clock is a little off and some of these icons I'm unfamiliar with. But other than that, I mean, it's really, really good. Do I have access to the root file system? Save as, save, close. Then if we open it up through here, oh, that's cool. The, the icon theming is also really, really nice. Under documents, we have the new text document. So it, it's working pretty good. Let's go ahead and close that out. I'm gonna hit this and see if I could configure the weather set location. And the icon still doesn't look right, but it's cool that it's there. So let's go down here. We have Copilot. We have the search. So if I hit find, it's probably gonna open up KRunner, unless if there's some sort of other application. Oh, yep. Settings, yep. KRunner settings. So that's another thing. The search bar isn't on the bottom there. That would probably take a little bit of effort to incorporate that properly. Let's close this out. Microsoft Copilot. How's this going to open up? Probably an edge, if I was to make an assumption. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is just like a web app of it, but it still works nonetheless. You have access to it. Let's close this out. We have the virtual desktop. So if I open up something and then go to the virtual desktop, that looks pretty good. There's four of them by default and wonder what's gonna open up with chat. This is usually Microsoft Teams here. Let's give that an open. This might actually be Microsoft Teams here. It's just not loading up properly. I don't know if they're technically allowed to do that. That might go against like Microsoft's terms of service. 
Oh, yeah, it's bugging out pretty good. I don't think you're allowed to pre-install Microsoft products and Linux distributions. I feel like that's against the rules and it's not working anyways. So I'm gonna try force closing that, there we go. And then last but not least, Discover. Let's see if they tried to theme this at all beyond the default. Nope, looks the same, but it looks good. I like it. So let's close this out, jump into our start menu one more time. We got OneDrive integration. I'm curious if this is actual integration or if it's gonna open up another web app. An error has occurred. Oh, it is a OneDrive sync utility. So it is an integration. Oh, there it is, cool. I'm not gonna actually set this up. I don't actually use OneDrive, so nah, but it's cool that it's there. Now let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And I actually think there's a, if I go PowerShell, Microsoft PowerShell is actually available uh, by stock in uh, Ubuntu via Snap package, if you happen to be interested. I don't see why you would, but it is there. htop, all, sudo apt install htop. So we've been opening, closing some things. Let's open up htop and see what we got going on. 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty average and nothing too crazy here. Let's quit out of that. sudo app install neofetch. So we kind of get a better idea of what's going on in the system. It's already installed, which is cool. So Neo fetch, here it is. And of course it's already installed because they had to throw in their custom little uh, kind of Windows XP-esque icon. This is running Plasma 5.27. This is the W window light blur theme. Now, if I go into settings, system settings, this is powertoys.control. Now I will note, I don't think, it said something about a trial when I first opened this up, which it does not, or is not that great. Power Toys needs to be active. So this is like their custom settings for all the integrations and stuff they provide. So like if I go over here to customization and I want to use this uh, darker theme here, I can select that and is it gonna work? Whoa, where'd we go? There we go. So that doesn't look too great, but it, <laughs> it changed some things. We have accounts, time and language. They did a really good job about making this kind of look like Windows, but now is when I'm gonna start talking negatively on it. Now, like I said earlier, compared to some of the other things we checked out, it is significantly better. But I feel like a lot of this could just be installed on any kind of Plasma environment with like a, a simple bash script or something like that, rather than forcing you to like install an entire Linux distribution. Let's go over to their website. So here it is, and you can see the link to get a professional key. Now to use this, it is $35. Granted the price, if you actually really support this project, isn't too bad. But whenever you start charging uh, for Linux distributions, you kind of start getting into some muddy waters and especially trying to charge for a Linux distribution just to look like Windows is a little weird. Uh, let's go to the project page here. The download is available on SourceForge and I will note the download is huge. If we go over here to files, it is. 5.1 gigabytes, holy crap. Now, we see here we have Windows 10 and Windows 11 theme. If we go down here, oh, it's still the full operating system. Oh, oh I hate Microsoft Edge sometimes. I can't unselect that. <laughs> And after applying the theme, I think, I mean, things are starting to look pretty bad. Free edition, LTS of W Cinnamon. So they do have a couple versions. If we scroll down here, we have the W Ubuntu Plasma with the Windows 11 theme. We have W Ubuntu Cinnamon with the Windows 10 theme pre-installed. And then we have something else, Linux FX, which I believe is one of the kind of crappy ones that we've looked at in the past. And there's no like links to any social media, I don't think, contact us. I mean, they have a Telegram group, which works. Oh, and a phone number. I don't want to call it. <laughs> I don't. Community start here. One thing one hour ago. So they definitely have a lot of work to do on their website, branding and, branding and actually kind of demonstrating what the product is and does. But overall, it's a cool project. The integrations are nice there. Some of their tools are cool. If I go over to release notes here, we could see some of the differences. If we go right here, the latest release was January, about a month ago. And this is, <laughs> I can't click on this. So this is all the information we get, system libraries, several bug fixes. So the amount of information they provide and them trying to charge for it and getting like trial notifications and stuff is a little sketch. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see if this project continues. A lot of these kind of fizzle out, die out, but we'll see. I do wish that they would just provide a script that we could use to install this kind of look on a KDE Plasma environment. That would be really cool. And to be frank, that's what probably 90 to 95 percent of most Linux distributions out there could just do install base Kubuntu 
pop this theme on there, you're good to go. But with all that, please let me know what you think down below. I would be interested to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions on this. I will be linking to some uh, references, such as the original video that I discovered this with, and some of my own videos on other clone type operating systems. With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Do make sure you check out the newsletter, a weekly source of Linux news and open source and tech news and stuff like that. And once again, have a beautiful day and goodbye.